Well, good evening. I am here at the McLeod RV Resort that are owned by these two wonderful people, and I would love for them each to introduce themselves. So, Tammy, would you start? Yes, so I'm Tammy. I'm one of the owners. I'm Warren's wife, and it's been a very exciting ride. <laughs> I'll bet it has. How and about you, Warren? My name's Warren, and I'm Tammy's husband. <laughs> Good. And one of the owners. <laughs> and so what would you like to... What's your background? I mean, where are you guys from we, we originally? We from South Africa, been uh -huh. in San Diego about 36 years. Mm -hmm. And now we don't know where we're from. <laughs> yeah, that's true. We moved up here in mid-February. Mm -hmm. Four feet in snow. So we Four have feet a park in, in Borrego. My mail comes here. My mail comes in San Diego. It's just a bizarre time, but we're just rolling with it. Yeah, like, exactly. Where we live. Yeah. You guys are kind of nomads in a way. Exactly. Yeah. So what made you guys decide that you wanted, in the first place, to own a campground? I, I'll answer that because... Of course. Uh, Ever since my earliest memories, I had like dreams of owning a bed and breakfast. Oh. I don't know why. I, I, I like. Yeah. Um, He's always trying to talk me. I into like. It. I like accommodating people and making money, but seeing them have a good time. I just love oh, watching yeah. people have a good time. So, mm -hmm. and then also I've always had RVs and trailers or mm -hmm. something like that, and stayed in RV parks. Mm -hmm. So even while living in San Diego. I stayed, uh, if you add up all the times, about two years in an RV park and I just noticed everyone's super friendly, mm -hmm. helpful, honest, mm -hmm. uh, where you're, uh, my, I go to my house in La Jolla and I didn't even know my neighbor for about six mm -hmm. years. So uh, That's true, it's a big difference. Right. Yeah, so absolutely. I, and then also coming from a retail background all my life, you mostly have happy customers but you do have way more disgruntled customers about price, about advertising, about Right. You name it, and people, mm -hmm. you know, in retail stores, they demand a certain standard, and it's very hard to please people. Right. But RV parks, uh, people are on vacation; they're happy, right. and mm -hmm. it's a whole different ball game. Right. They're here to have a good time, and happy you provide that. Happy campus. Exactly. So, tell me about like what what do you do specifically to make sure they have a good time? That's her job. I know. I know. That's why I'm asking her. <laughs> Just trying to accommodate them, make sure that they're in the space that they want to be in. Mm -hmm. You know, most of the people that come for one night land up staying two nights mm -hmm. or more. Mm -hmm. So you try to accommodate that. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of the people we have um, encountered that come to this park have been mm -hmm. coming here for many years. Oh, that's nice. Many, many years. Mm -hmm. like today there was a lady in the, in the lobby, of, she said 40 years. 40 years. So this park has been around for a long time. 1972. Okay, okay. And you just took it over when? Six months ago. Six months ago. And when you arrived, what did it look like? Well, we came in November to look at it and it was, it was covered half in snow, half you could see. Mm -hmm. And then we came in mid-February mm -hmm. and it was all snow. Mm -hmm. And it was a mild yeah. winter. <laughs> oh, so it gets worse. If you subscribe to our YouTube channel, you'll see episode one. I step out into the snow in my flip flops. <laughs> oh my gosh. So, what's the name of that YouTube channel? It's uh, McLeod RV Park. Okay. Excellent. Everybody subscribe. <laughs> okay. That's, yeah. So, it was covered in snow, and, and yet you saw the potential somehow. Oh, absolutely. It was a beautiful well, park in the winter. Oh, yeah. So, little did we know that this is what it was going to look like. You know? Right. Exactly. And, and we saw the potential on the financials mm. and uh, pr pretty much everyone we encountered in this little town of McLeod, the gas station, the grocery store, the restaurant, you know, we got chatting with people, How? Wh what are we doing here? And we said we're looking at the park and everybody goes, "That you better beware, that park gets busy in the summer. So <laughs> I knew it wasn't just the agent or the owner uh, mm -hmm. telling us a story. That's really helpful. And have you discovered that to be true? Oh, yeah. If uh, sure. I've had a few businesses in my life, but I've never had a business where I almost wanted it to slow down a bit <laughs> because uh, it gets real busy and mm -hmm. a lot of the park is grass. That's and true. I seem to be like the grass bad guy because I want to, well, Kenny and uh, Jay who work for us, mm -hmm. when the people leave, they got to grow the grass. They got to add seed. They got to water like crazy. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, 
Yeah, you got to do that in between all right, the different so you, visits, right? It's a lot of work. It's a lot of work, but yeah. Then I keep on going back and forth. So we put gravel in the spaces or people love the grass, but then they have a friend come over and they just park on the grass. So I got to go around and say, can you please park, park on the asphalt or right, the gravel? Right, right. It's a bit but of a yeah. pain. But, but people have been very oh, yeah. nice Everyone's about super it nice about it. They just, they just yeah. don't know. Yeah, yeah exactly. I think they would rather have grass than gravel. Ah, oh, yeah. okay. So I've noticed you have sprinklers going all the time because you're really trying to make the grass grow. Oh, yeah, so yeah that's work. good. Yeah. And then probably every two or three days, Kenny gets on the mower and he, he, it takes a full day to mow the whole property. Wow. So how many spaces do you have? Probably... Well, with the cabins and the glamping, it, it turns out to be about 140. Wow. 140. And, and say a little bit about the, the glamping. So uh, Warren had a vision, mm -hmm. just like he has... He has a lot of visions, I know. Everything that he does, and <laughs> yeah. he put this vision to a test, and mm -hmm. they built a deck, mm -hmm. and put a tent on the deck, mm -hmm. um, it has memory foam mattresses inside, Nice. and a little fire urn, yeah, wood burning and camp stove, camp, camp stove, stove, yeah, and it keeps very, very warm at night, mm, nice. and you can cook uh, some water on there, or warm up some food, Yeah. Um, and most of the people, well, all of the people that have come to stay in it have absolutely loved it. Oh, and that's awesome. One of the reasons uh, why I came up with the idea is because there's a creek on the perimeter of the property, on right. the property line, and you can mm -hmm. hear the water running. There's a little waterfall. Mm -hmm. And I just thought, how cool it would be for people to be on a wood deck in mm -hmm. a glamping tent listening All to the water running. We love it. So romantic, actually. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So do you have enough people working here? Do you need more help? No, we're, we're good now, right? You're good? Yeah, yeah we got a really awesome. perfect team mm -hmm. right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we got a team that yeah. kicks butt. Like, <laughs> no, really, they, we got yeah. like three guys and one lady, and they really do the work of double, mm -hmm. you know, regular people's work. Mm -hmm. Kenny does the work of two guys or three guys on it. Oh my gosh, he's so energetic. He can do so much. I, mean, I know. It runs out of energy. Besides, yeah. the, besides the creek on the property line, we mm -hmm. have a little diverter that makes a stream run through the middle of the property. Mm -hmm. And um, when I set up the glamping tents, we put up parking in a certain area and uh, there was no way to, you have to jump over the creek to get to the tents. And mm -hmm. we just had a temporary piece of plywood. Mm -hmm. I go there one afternoon and those guys have built a, a bridge. A bridge. And I know. I've and gone like, over it. And they say, uh, yeah. is it okay if we did this? <laughs> I'm like, of course. If I, uh, you know, I didn't even ask them to do it. They just right. built a bridge. You Don't know? you just love people who take initiative? Four hours. It's so helpful. Have, it would have taken yeah. somebody else maybe a week. Oh, easily. Yeah, definitely. So we're we really, really lucky with the, with the people that help us. Yeah, you a, are. Yeah. And a, you, you're right outside of a wonderful little town called um, McLeod. Yes. Yeah. Right, and say a little bit about what you think about McLeod. Well, first of all, the people are amazing. Mm -hmm. Small towns, you mm -hmm. know, as you know, Borrego and McLeod. So mm -hmm. I guess we're attracted to small towns. Yeah, I guess so. Because you're owners of another park, yes. which is where and what is it called? It's in Borrego Springs and it's called Desert Sands Vintage. Mm -hmm. Park. Mm -hmm. And it's way south in the low desert. Yes. Seven, so 750 miles from here yeah. exactly and it is completely opposite to here because that's low desert and this is like pacific northwest yes, mountains yes. so um but the towns yeah. are very similar small ah, small shops, mm -hmm. good, good people very friendly. good restaurants excellent restaurants oh yeah good people mm -hmm. you know so i guess uh, that's that's what it's all about for us yeah definitely, definitely yeah this transition a lot easier mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's, that's good one thing i want to add with tammy i mean i would do it anyway but we we've stayed at a lot of rv parks i've been across country a couple mm -hmm. of times stayed at many rv parks and a lot of the people that have been coming here for decades said that they were not super happy with the way the park was run in mm. the last few years mm -hmm. and I get it um, you know they were running the park for 16 years you probably get burned out yes but I figured if we in this business a hospitality business you've got to go over and above super important to be better mm -hmm. than the park down the road mm -hmm. so uh, mm -hmm. Tammy is a pleaser and she wants to make everyone happy mm, I know that so about a her. lot of times <laughs> for example <laughs> last night 
some gentleman who had a rental RV. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she volunteered me to show him how to hook up his RV when he arrived at I 9 remember. p.m. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, but what Warren doesn't tell <coughs> you is it was his first time ever in an RV. <laughs> right. And he had probably called me 15 times mm -hmm. in the past week. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I assured him that we would be on the property, we would take care of him, mm -hmm. he wouldn't have a problem, and I promised him he would have water and electricity. Yes. But, um, so, you know, he did say that <laughs> we made his visit here a lot easier mm -hmm. and he was at ease. That's good. So I think it's important to be like that. Absolutely. And I think you probably have a lot of people who would say that about but we, their experience I, here. I want to go over and above what a normal RV park operator does. Like, for example, last week a gentleman arrived. Most, most of our customers are elderly, like the ones with the money, retired. But uh, he arrived and all the spots here are unusually different. So he arrived and uh, he had a massive 40 foot fifth wheel, three axles. And he rolled up to his spot and he couldn't fit into it. And he, mm -hmm. you know, you, you're driving a few hours, you're hungry, you gotta go to the bathroom. He, he got really bent out of shape. And he came back to the office with his fifth wheel. So I'm like, hey, jump in my Jeep. Here, all, I went on the computer. I'm like, here are all the numbers that are available. Let's go shop for spaces. Oh, fun. And, That's uh, a really nice way to do it. The park and he's yeah. like, you know, he picked his spot and yeah. uh, problem solved. Where, problem solved. Where if there was just some employee in the office, they would have gone, all right, just make it work. And, right. you know, the guy wouldn't have been happy. Right. So, so you go above and beyond yeah. and you make them happy. Just do different things. Exactly. Little things. Uh, if I see somebody walking with their trash mm -hmm. and I'm driving the Jeep, I just tell them to sling it on top of the roof or the hood mm -hmm. and I'm going to the trash anyway. Yeah. So just take it, you know. It's those small things that make a huge Definitely. difference. They really yeah. do. Yeah. Just stay a lot uh, yeah, I exactly. If there ever is a time in the future where we become grumpy and short, <laughs> which, which will never happen. <laughs> no. But if that does happen, that's when you got to sell the that's business. That's the time to because sell. Because it's hospitality and you got to, right. you got to make it work. Yeah. So you're, in a sense, you're doing your bed and breakfast, only they provide their own breakfast. Yes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So you've, you've achieved your dream. So yeah. that's wonderful. Manifesting. Yeah. I well, I wish you guys all the best. I know it's going to be a huge success. Already is. So I'm sure it'll stay that way. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks. I really appreciate you sharing your story with us. And uh, everybody, you got to come to McLeod RV Resort. You will absolutely love your stay. <laughs> Thanks, you guys. Thank you. You're welcome.